Hi everyone, I'm Kenneth. I'm a program manager on the Visual Studio Code team, and today I'm here to talk about what's new in Visual Studio Code. For those of you that are not familiar with Visual Studio Code, uh, or just VS Code as we call our product, then it's our cross-platform editor that is available on Windows, Mac, and Unix. Uh, you could say that it's a more lightweight alternative to the traditional Visual Studio. Over the past six months, we've been extremely busy working on improving VS Code. Um, and today I want to give you a few highlights on some of the things we've been working on. I want to talk about our new workspaces functionality, how we made improvements with File Explorer, how we have improved source control inside the editor, but also some of the more basic things we have, we have improved, such as layout, the text editor itself, how debugging works, and how we re recommend uh, extensions to you. The first thing I want to talk about is multi-root workspaces. It's been a big feature request to have support for multiple folders inside VS Code, and with multiple uh, multi-root workspaces, we enable that. I added a link here to a great article in our documentation that goes into detail on how multi-root workspaces work, but first let me show you how these things work. So what I have open here is Visual Studio Code with a front-end project open. So what you see here is that I've opened a folder called Timey Client. But this is a front-end project that is also dependent on a back-end project. So before we had multi-root multi uh, workspaces, I would need to have two instances of Visual Studio Code open. But what I can do now is that I can go up here in File and say Add Folder to Workspace. And what I then can do is that I can select my Timey API project and I can say Add. And what you now see here is that I have two folders open inside Visual Studio, and you also see that, that Visual Studio Code says I have an untitled workspace open. So this is pretty cool because now I'm able to work both on my client-side code and my backend code at the same time. So if I want to save this workspace, let's say this is, this is kind of how I want to work in the future, I can go up here at fi in File and say Save Workspace As, and I can give it a name. So now I've saved my workspace and it's called Timey. The cool thing about a workspace is that I can add a bunch of folders, but I can also add a bunch of settings. So if I open my command palette here in, in VS Code, I can basically say choose the option Open Workspace Settings. And what you're seeing now here is that I have all my settings I can configure, but I can also, when I say, change a setting here, I want to save the setting, let's say I want to change the font size, what you now see is that the, the setting here is being saved to my workspace settings and not to my user settings or my global settings. This basically means that I can share settings with my team as a part of my workspace, uh, which is pretty cool. So you might wonder, like, how does these workspaces work? Is it like a special convention or what's going on behind the scenes? And I can just open the command palette here again and then I can open workspace configuration file. What you see here is that we just opened timey.vs-workspace. And this shows a little JSON file that shows you the structure. And you can see this is just my folders that is a part of my workspace and my settings. This all means, because it's just a flat file on your file system, uh, is that you can basically check this uh, uh, file into your source tree and share it with your team. So that was workspaces, a, a nifty feature we, we hope many of you will find useful. The next thing I want to show you is uh, some of the things we've been doing with source control status in our file explorer. Let me show you that. So what I have open here in VS Code is my front-end project, Timey Client. And if I, for example, make a change here to uh, app.js, let's just make a change, let me scroll up to the top here and modify like an object. Um, what you see here is that because I made a change, is that VS Code has now picked up this change and AppJS is now shown in yellow. If I hover over the file, you can kind of see that it shows you the file name, but it also shows the status that this file is modified. So what we show here is a little M icon. You will also notice that the folder that AppJS is within has also turned yellow, and the timey client root folder has also turned yellow. And um, what I then can do here, for example, if I add a new file, so let me create new.js. Once I've saved this file, you'll see that we'll also show you new files, but we'll highlight new files as green. And if you hover over this file, it shows that it's untracked, so we show a U. 
This is a, a really neat feature for quickly providing you an overview of the file changes you make. Um, and that way, then you can kind of see if you're editing, editing too many files and you need to like make commits more often. Some of you might, might find all this coloring and icons annoying. Um, so we have also added a bunch of settings that enables you to, to disable all these things as we have enabled them by default. So if you go to your settings, you can basically search for explore.decorators. And what you see here is that we have two new settings. Uh, explore.decorators.batches, if I set this to false, you will basically see all the batches in the file explorer is now disappearing. We also have explore.decorators.colors. And if I set this to false, you'll see all the color going away in the file explorer, and then things were as they were before. Let me just remove these because I actually like these colors. Um, so we really hope that this little feature will help you to have a better overview of what's going on when you change files. On source control, we've also been working on adding inline controls and inline diffs uh, for source control. Here's a demo of that. So what I have open here is my app.js as before. And you can kind of see that the change I made before is, is already here. And you can see that it's highlighted out here with blue in the gutter because I, I modified this file. But let me go to the bottom of this file and make some more changes. Let me add some white spaces here. What you see is that we highlight like new additions as green. And um, the cool thing we have added for, v, uh, for VS Code is basically inline diffs. So if you hover over the, the, the status icon out here in the gutter, uh, you can now click on it, and what will happen is that we will open an inline uh, diff editor that will show you your change. So as you can see here, this shows me the difference between what I, what I had before and what I have now. And what I can do is like, hmm, this actually looks pretty good, so let me stage this change. Now you see VS Code is jumping to the bottom of the file with my new lines I just added. And you know what, like I, I really don't want like these new lines here, so I can revert these changes. And here I'll just confirm that I don't want these things anymore. And bam, um, if I now go to the source control part of, uh, of VS Code, you'll see that the changes I just approved before is now staged and are ready to be committed. We think this is a really powerful feature that enables you to do smaller commits and get a better overview of the changes you make. Uh, and it hopefully makes it much easier for you to make the right commits uh, at the right time. On source control, we have also added support for multiple source systems at the same time. Uh, and here's a demo of it. So what I have open here is still my multi-root workspace timing with my, my backend project and my front-end project. Uh, and I'm here in, in the source control part of, of uh, Visual Studio Code. If you look at the top here, what you see is that there's a panel here called source control providers. And you'll see I have my timey client that is using Git. You also see that I have my timey API that is using Git. And you see the changes uh, that I just made to my front end project. The cool thing is, is that we now support multiple of these providers. So if I click on timey API, I will now see that I don't have any changes in my API, and that way then I can actually jump between source control providers from workspace folder to workspace folder. The more interesting thing is that both my projects in this example is using Git, but if I, for example, were to use SVN or Team Foundation system or anything like that, I can actually just click this menu here and, and choose to install additional source providers right away. And this basically means that you can use Git and SVN at the same time VS Code supports it. On the more basic th front in code, we have also been adding support for virtual docking for panels. And here's how this works. So what I have open here uh, is my app.js as before in my client side project. And the first thing I want to do here is that I want to show you the in integrated terminal we have in VS Code. So I just say view integrated terminal. But you know what, like I'm usually I'm on a much larger screen that is in a widescreen format. So having my terminal at the bottom of the screen is not really t using my, my screen very well. So we have added vertical docking. And if you look here to the right, we have a new icon called move to right. So if I click this icon, you'll see that we move all the panels, including the terminal to the right. And this is just a little feature that enables you to take better advantage of you having a larger screen. Um, and hopefully it, it enables you to be more productive. On the editor front, we have been adding support for code region folding, uh, and here's how it works for JavaScript. So I still have my 
client side project open and I have AppJS, uh, uh, I have AppJS open. What you see in, in VS Code is that if you have a function that we already support code, code folding that you can basically fold in or, or collapse a, a function. But we also add a support for custom regions. So this is basically supporting what a lot of programming languages already support. You can make a comment and you can use a hash and you can add a region. So I can add a region here called Kenneth and I can end this region in a, in a piece of code by saying end region. And what you now see is that VS Code is now able to fold this region and collapse this. Um, this is an example in, t in JavaScript, but, but out of the box we support region folding for Go, Python, and a bunch of other programming languages. And if there's a programming language that we don't, uh, we don't support yet, please open an issue on GitHub so we can get it, get it working. We've also added support for automatic imports for JavaScript and TypeScript, and here's a cool demo of this. So what I have open here is still my front-end project in Visual Studio Code, and what I've opened is my places component, places.js. In this particular component, I want to use uh, some, some date formatting logic. So let me show you how that works. So here I'll just say is date, and what you see here from the autocompleter is that we have automatically detected a uh, moment JS. So we can actually automatically import this reference for you. So if I press enter here, what you see is that is date was automatically imported from moment JS here in the top. So this way then you can kind of explore your, your, your JavaScript code um, without having to, all, to, to do all these import statements by yourself. You can offload some of that to your editor. On the refactoring side, we have added support for method uh, extracting both for JavaScript and TypeScript, and here's how this works. So I still have my front-end project open here in Visual Studio Code, uh, and to show you how method uh, extracting uh, works, I will open up my, my place component uh, I use to render my, my application. In this component, I have a get in activity information method that does a lot of things, and some of the things that it's doing is it's trying to, to generate the right CSS class uh, for a particular time of day. But you know what, like this, this uh, logic here could be quite useful to have in kind of a, a utility function. So what I can do here is that I can select uh, my code, and you'll see that this, this little light bulb is, is appearing. It's called show fixes, so if I click it, it will basically give me some suggestions on what to do, and one of them here is that I can extract this, uh, this logic to a method in, 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 in the place class. So I select this, and then it asks me for a name. I would like to call this get CSS class, and I press enter. What you now see is that my code has been refactored to, to use uh, this method I just introduced, and the logic I was highlighting before has automatically been, been extracted into a, a new uh, function. For debugging, we have added something called composite debugging that enable, enables you to debug multiple things at the same time. And I'm gonna show you how this works now. Visual Studio Code have a great debugger that enables you to debug JavaScript in Node, but also in the browser uh, with Chrome. We also support debugging Go, Python, a lot of other programming languages. But for the example, I'm using JavaScript. So if I open up my launch.json, that is a configuration file for how you configure the debugger, then you see I have a configuration for how to do Node.js debugging and how to do Chrome debugging. And the new thing we have added is something we call compounds that has enabled you to make configurations that is using other debug configurations. So in this particular case, I made a compound called full stack that is using both my Node and Chrome debugger. And to give you a demo of how this works, let me first go into the terminal here and start my, my API. So I just went into my API folder and let me start it up. So now my API here is running on localhost port 3001. What I can do is that I can go to the debugging uh, section of VS Code and I can select the full stack configuration. What you now see VS Code is doing is that it's starting an instance of Chrome and it's asking me what node process to connect to. Let me select my API. And what you now see is that with one click, I bo both launch Chrome and connected Visual Studio Code to my Chrome instance. And you, and you also see that my Node debugger has been started. So this means at this point in time, VS Code can debug both your front end and your back end at the same time. This is just a demo of what you can do with JavaScript. But you can also imagine that you want to debug your two different back end systems that are using Go or .NET or 
or Python, and you can do that with compounds. We think compounds are really powerful, and um, so we can't wait to see what you do with them. For debugging, we have also added support for line numbers and sources inside the debugging console. Here's how this looks. So what I have open here is VS Code, already connected to, to Chrome as I showed you before. And if you notice down here in the debug console, um, we now show uh, line numbers and the, the source of, uh, of a console.log statement. So my application has emitted place uh, Seattle. What you can see here is that this is coming from places.js line 63. If I click on this, we will take you to the wire line where this console.log message is. Uh, and the cool thing about this is that this console.log statement is coming from places at JS, but that's not what the browser is seeing. The browser is seeing a bundled webpack minified file, but we'll pass a source map for you and show you the right place. And um, we think this is pretty cool. And we've also been adding coloring inside the debugging console, so you can use console.logs and errors and other things. Here's how this looks. So here I have Visual Studio Code still connected to my, my, my Chrome instance. And what you probably have already have noticed on the console is that we have this red statement called not an error. And that's basically like a, just a console.error that's been outputted for my application. But what's new in code is that we'll actually colorize it. So for red, we, we, uh, for errors, we show a color red. So this is a quick way for you to distinguish between errors and just co regular console.logs. And for extensions, we've been working on improving uh, the, the extensions we recommend to you because we think that they're vital to how you use VS Code. I still have my workspace open with my backend and a frontend project, but what I can do here is that if I go to the extensions part of VS Code, you see down here at the bottom that we have this new recommended uh, section. And like there's a bunch of different extensions here that has a little style because they're recommended to me. So if I choose from this Beautify extension, you can see that this has been this extension is recommended based on the file system or the files you opened recently. So this basically means that we have figured out, hey, you open JavaScript quite often, so maybe this extension makes makes sense for you. Another recommendation we have here is, for example, the Docker extension for VS Code, and this extension is recommended to me because I already have Docker installed on my computer. So. With this and these improved recommendations, we're trying to be a bit more intelligent about how extensions work in VS Code, so we can give you the right tools and, and the right support for the workflows that you have. So, that was the highlights I want to show you today. But as next steps, I, I want to recommend you to download the VS Code Insider Edition that basically gives you the latest bits as we're shipping every day. Uh, and by that, you also get a chance to help us providing feedback uh, before features hit the market. Um, if you're kind of curious to know more about the features I, I talked about and, and what else we've been up to, I can highly recommend go to code.visualstudio.com to read more. And lastly, I want you uh, to revisit all the videos from Connect that is already on Channel 9, and especially watch the keynote where we talked about something called Live Share that enables you to do collaborative editing, but also collaborative debugging. Thanks.